Food shortages are incoming, as the food supply chain already in danger of breaking down. With businesses closing, unemployment skyrocketing, and everyone forced to stay at home, a hurricane is about to hit. And that is the food supply shortage. This is the mother of all crises, food insecurity. As the pandemic and the economic fallout has left a number of Americans in need of assistance. Food banks nationwide fear shortages as demand is exploding. They could run out of food shortly, as demand intensifies, and donations and volunteers are dropping rapidly. More American families are today relying entirely on food pantries to bring food on the table. This is a dire situation families can only take day by day. Food banks where low-income Americans can turn to survive, are now struggling themselves. They're overwhelmed by people desperate for help. Food bank donations have been cut in half at a time when queues are growing rapidly. In just one week, over 3 million Americans have turned to meal centers, food banks, and kitchens for any help that they can get. We risk a looming food crisis unless measures are taken fast to protect the most vulnerable, and keep global food supply chains alive, and mitigate the pandemic's impacts across the food system. It's an issue that goes far wider as well. Production and American agriculture are on the brink. As a result, it means that the food supply is fast becoming a global problem. In a situation like this, the policies of individual countries can have a global impact. In the United States, agricultural workers are demanding more as they work to keep the shelves of our supermarkets full. It's almost overnight that food workers went from being an afterthought in people's minds to suddenly being essential work. It should not have taken a pandemic of global proportions for us to realize that food workers literally feed us. Some fear that this could be too little too late, with the supply chain already in danger of breaking down. The pandemic is hitting farmers hard. Some dairy farmers are being forced to dump their milk instead of selling it, because there's little demand with restaurants and schools closed. Other farmers are struggling to harvest their crops, which could affect what you'll see at the grocery store. Because foreign labor, mostly migrant workers filled more than a quarter million jobs in the US last year. The harvest season is here, but there are not enough workers, seasonal foreign labor mainly from Mexico. The virus crisis has delayed the US government's processing of their work visas. Blueberry farms are days away from harvest. They urgently need pickers and packers. Most of their seasonal workers are stuck in Guatemala, where the borders are sealed because of the virus. Millions of dollars of blueberries could rot in the fields as the American workers do not want to do this kind of work. With no workers, crops will go unharvested, and that has a ripple effect throughout this economy, and it will affect the consumers. Restaurants usually buy about 60% of the crops, but not this year, with so many restaurants closed. This is devastating for farmers across the nation. Many will go bankrupt. The price of food will become so high and scarce. There is already a horrible and chaotic scene in every supermarket. People yelling, shouting, screaming, crying, and worse coughing. It's a stress response to panic. People see their life flash before their eyes, and even though toilet paper isn't their savior, they will grab whatever it is to feel like they've done something to survive. People are cleaning out the shelves. Food shortages are incoming. This is a food shortage nobody was prepared for everyone to hoard. The outbreak could affect food security as the global pandemic disrupts labor availability and the supply chain. We already see challenges in terms of the logistics involving the movement of food, not being able to move food from point A to point B. And the impact on livestock sector due to reduced access to animal feed and slaughterhouses diminished capacity due to logistical constraints and labor shortages. 2019 was already a terrible year for American farmers. 2020 is going to be much, much worse, something is for sure going to hit the fan. Over 1 million calves drowned in the Midwest in last year's spring flooding alone. Prices of food will have to rise. But there will be free food in the FEMA camps for us. Have you been to a grocery store lately? Ignoring the one-hour wait to get in, you can't get any of this stuff. Oil gone, butter gone, all canned veggies and soups and stocks gone, frozen veggies gone, most fresh and frozen meats gone, peanut butter gone, beans and rice in bulk bags are gone. It is absolute mayhem out there right now. Stores are definitely low in stock on everything. No toilet paper to very low levels, no cleaning supplies, very little meat, low pasta, and canned goods. The strain on food supply is getting extremely tight. 
Relying on grocery stores during an epidemic is dumb. The last place I want to go to is a public store where people are coughing, sneezing, or just asymptomatically breathing on me. It is full on bizarro out there. People are in a panic mode over toilet paper when they should worry about food shortages. The food supply chain is already in danger of breaking down. Not only the US but also Canada food supply will be affected soon. Canada imports a good percentage of its food supply from the US despite having so many resources. Retailers already lost 46,200 jobs in March but could lose millions by May. Best if they would shut down and stop selling their Gmode and heavily processed crap to consumers is healthy. It's best to eat wild violets, dandelions and chicken of the woods, the non-organic bananas. Heavily dosed with pesticides that find their way into the soil and morph into the meat of the banana over time. Stores cannot get enough food to restock their shelves. Future deliveries of rice, flour, beans, liquids, including alcohol, generally heavier items to transport, will be cut drastically short in place for lighter items for delivery to stores. In the West, sooner 2 to 3 weeks, I foresee grocery stores being open for 2 to 3 days a week with not such a broad selection. Think not? How long did it take for everything else to be closed up? Shelves with the forementioned are already resembling the toilet paper aisle and that's with significantly less consumers. Food processing factories are shutting down nationwide. Large food canneries have closed. Canned food prepared with seasonal vegetables, won't be. Farmers requiring parts for tractors will also be out of luck. There's also a distribution problem caused by panic buying if the masses continue their hoarding hysterics. Best bet is called off this stupid quarantine and avoid eventual mass starvation. Or trust your government. Or just demand your rights now, before they totally vanish under the Marxist bureaucratic insanity. And remember all those fools who have called our economics and society unsustainable for the past 50 years. Well now it is. If you want to see food supply chain interruptions, just wait. Farmers are almost all older people. Those who understand the complex automated equipment are older. With our people getting sick and dying, farm operations will come to a stop. If the city dwellers start rioting or getting violent, no trucker in his or her right mind would drive into that city. At least without a military escort. If looting begins, things will get even worse. The stores will close, never to open again. The massive challenge is distributing the food, not producing it. Warehouses are full. Grocery stores are not. Truck drivers are the only thing between us and massive food shortages. If it gets really bad, state lockdowns could stop food transportation cross-country. Infected farmers will be slowing down productivity. The time of preparing is just about over. For those of you who have prepared, this is what you have prepared for. If you have prepared to the point, you can help others. I greatly encourage you to do so. Retailers continue to stock as quickly as they can. Unfortunately, the vast majority of Americans still have absolutely no idea what is ahead of us. Most do not understand how screwed this country is going to be. The norm is no longer going to be the norm. Most don't understand that a huge amount of our food comes from other countries. And when the dollar becomes worthless soon, people are not going to be able to handle it. A virus isn't causing a supply chain breakdown. This has got to be something else going on. I believe there is something far deeper going on to cause this and bring us crying to our government or deep state for relief. This makes me think driving farmers out of business was part of the plan all along. Civil unrest is the biggest threat. If the rule of law is suspended, mutual cooperation is going to be one way to survive. Of course, isolation and being completely self-sufficient works too. The bottom line is, I think we get through this together, and not necessarily individually. If it gets bad enough, numbers are going to be needed for defense. Always think as survivalists people. Don't expect the government to fly over and drop a care package in your yard. And as for growing your own food, people really need to do that. Our over-reliance on imported food from other countries was a disaster waiting to happen. No one cares about the US like we do, US citizens. When push comes to shove, people take care of their own first. Gardening and yard work is good therapy, God bless the farmers, they are the only ones that produce anything. Welcome back to the Atlantis Report. This is everything you need to know about your local supermarket.
If you load the store to its maximum inventory level, and no more trucks come in to make deliveries, the store has, at most, a three-day supply of a product. Now go to their distribution center. The warehouse, carrying a maximum level of inventory, has enough product to supply all the stores its services for three days. What happens when the stores get stripped clean, and the distribution center can't get the product into the stores fast enough? It doesn't take three days plus three days, or three days times three days, to get the situation straightened out. It takes three days to the third power, or 27 days, provided that what caused the stores to be stripped clean was a one-time event. And what about your Walmart or Target? Go to the general merchandise departments. Most of that product comes from China, and it comes in through the port of Long Beach. Problem? No container cars at Long Beach. That means no goods are coming in. It also means that whatever product is in the general merchandise departments, plus whatever back stock is in the back room, is all that store has, and they won't be getting any more for quite some time. See how easy it is for a just-in-time inventory system to break down very quickly? Now, factor in credit. None of this stuff goes anywhere without a functioning 3 to 14 day system of credit. Think bill of lading. It tells the seller of the goods that the buyer of the goods is good for the money because the buyer's bank is good for the money. No seller is going to put goods on a truck or train without this assurance. And we are starting to see real problems in the credit markets with a real high risk of a credit freeze. Think of what kind of hell is going to break loose in stores if we have a credit freeze. Am I afraid of the far more contagious and dangerous insanity that has swept the globe? You bet. The virus pales in comparison to the damage elected officials will do in the form of lockdowns and forced closures. Get a grip. Most people infected with this disease don't even require hospitalization. This isn't bubonic plague. Fear is the culprit. Those idiots addicted to corporate mainstream media and the fear-mongering to sell eyeballs to advertisers. People are staying at home who should not. They are really going to cripple all capitalist economies seemingly on purpose. What will happen to the lockdowns should they continue this insane nonsense, they will utterly break down society's ability to cope will collapse, and the morons will have lead us into a far worse crisis. Idiot political appointees with idiotic spreadsheets deciding everything. The economic effects of the pandemic continue to appear, stock exchanges collapsing, stagnant production falling expectations for global growth, entire economies broke, and an uncertain future for the current system. The fragility of the Western, progressively denying its liberal and globalist values of an open society, and free markets, promoting increasingly constant and incisive state interventions, closing borders, and instituting strong economic protectionism. First to go was the gold standard, and then the petrodollar, and finally, the lead shoe drops. Agenda 2030 is being implemented now. More are lining up here and in smaller surrounding towns next county over for food. Few will donate to food banks, America is trashed, and unemployment will be over 50% soon. This was the Atlantis Report. Please like. Share. Subscribe. And please take some time to subscribe to my backup channels, I do upload videos there too. You'll find the links in the description box. You will also find a PayPal link if you want to make a donation. Thank you.